welcome back to the D4A channel. Now, what we're doing today is actually going to be a pretty short video. It's going to be short because it's actually just an announcement. Now, I really don't like making, you know, videos like this that are just talking and no action. But I think the announcement is, you know, big enough and exciting enough that it deserves its own video. Plus, I think it will be kind of wrong, you know, for me to all of a sudden do something that I have, you know, s that's completely different from what I said in my original bike carb conversion plan video. So, what, what's the big announcement? Well, you could probably tell from the title of the video. And the big announcement is that I'm going with standalone ignition control for my bike carb conversion instead of the originally planned stock ECU. Now, why I have decided to do this is that after thinking things through and, you know, talking to fellow MR2 owners and talking to some people that have actually done bike, bike carb conversions to their engines, it simply, you know, uh, came out as a much more reasonable, as a much smarter and as a much more, you know, exciting and interesting choice for my engine build. Now, originally I wanted to do uh, you know, the build with my uh, stock, uh, stock ECU and the reason behind this is that I wanted to actually save money. But once I took into account the price uh, of a, you know, used stock ECU, I need to buy one because it needs to be, you know, uh, a 4AG ECU that is combat compatible with a MAP sensor. So I needed that and I need the wiring harness that is compatible with the MAP sensor and the, you know, and the ECU. Now, once I took into account the cost of these things used versus the cost, you know, of a, of a standalone ignition controller, the savings were actually not that impressive at all. They actually amounted to, I think, around $100, you know, and maybe $30 or $130, $40, which is, which I don't think is that a lot of money when you're taking, you know, into account some of the other parts that I have poured, you know, a lot of my hard-earned money into. Another thing that really you know, made this little price difference uh, less attractive is the fact that installing the trigger wheel onto the crank pulley and the crank, crankshaft position sensor, both of these things you need for your standalone ignition controller, installing them once you have already put the engine in the car, you know, and made everything, you know, uh, got everything to work, is actually a lot harder than when the engine is still out. Now, I still have my engine out of the car, so it's actually a lot smarter to, you know, fit the crank position sensor and the, you know, uh, crank pulley trigger wheel, you know, right now. And it will be really, you know, stupid to work, you know, hard to get the whole stock ECU bike carb setup running and, you know, then just after a few months do all of that work again to get the standalone ignition, you know, control in. So I have decided, you know, to go with the standalone ignition right away. Now, another thing that made my decision to go with standalone ignition Final was actually once I researched all the benefits of standalone ignition control. Now, standalone ignition control is really amazing because it actually opens the doors to actual tuning, you know, of my engine. It lets you do things that you cannot do with your stock ECU. Uh, it is the ticket, you know, to real horsepower gains, and it's the ticket to razor sharp throttle response. Now, of course, this is something I'm after. And I think this is something that everyone who's building, you know, cars and engines, you know, as a car guy is after because that's what makes your car fun and that's what makes driving fun, you know, and everything else. Plus, I think standalone ignition control is actually going to be a really interesting learning experience, you know, that we, that we can dive into, you know, and see, you know, how to play with all different ignition maps and ignition curves, you know, and whatnot. I still have, you know, very little knowledge of that, so it's going to be, I think, a really steep learning curve. But I think it's going to be, you know, a lot of fun nevertheless. So, um, once I have actually decided to go with standalone ignition control, the question was which particular brand and model of standalone ignition controller to go for. Now, uh, if you Google around, you will see that one of the most common choices when it comes to standalone ignition control is definitely MSD. You know, that red box you have seen in a lot of, uh, you know, uh, street cars and race cars and and dragsters and a bunch of other cars. It's really, I think it's a famous, you know, little box and it's definitely a great product, but uh, if you want to get one that is programmable, which I think is the MSD 6AL-2, 
uh, it's actually really, really pricey when new, and there's a bunch of accessory, accessories that you have to get. And I, I personally didn't find the you know, wiring process and install process of the MSD into a Japanese car that used to be fuel injected. I didn't find that process to be very straightforward at all for me. And I'm not very good when it comes to wiring things into cars. And at this time right now, I'm not ready you know, to spend a lot of time troubleshooting electrical you know, problems and issues and connections and whatnot. You know, and understanding how the, all the things work because I want to get, you know, the car and the engine running as soon as possible. So, it was the price and, and the install that uh, made me dismiss the MSD. Now, another really popular go-to choice for uh, standalone ignition control is Megajolt. You have probably also heard about Megajolt being mentioned on forums and, you know, on, on uh, various builds on YouTube and wherever else. Now, Megajolt is actually a lot, a lot more affordable than MSD while giving it, you know, all the same functionality and even being uh, a simpler install when it comes when it comes to, you know, Japanese cars. Now, <coughs> but after researching a bit, I've actually managed to find a product that has, you know, all the functionalities of Megajolt plus a lot of really interesting extras and it actually has, you know, the Megajolt kind of beat on all fronts whilst being, you know, just a tiny bit more expensive. And the product I have decided to go for is called Nodiz Pro. Now, Nodiz, I think, means no dizzy, which means uh, no distributor. Now, and just like uh, Megajolt, it's actually, uh, you know, a 3D uh, mappable, a fully 3D mappable wasted spark digital ignition controller. But it has a lot of these really nice benefits you know, and extras that for me make it a, a better choice than Megajolt. Now, uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to list just the basic, ex you know, the basic benefits of Notice, and then once I get it and once I do the unboxing videos, we are of course going to go into the details and dig deeper, you know, into how to get this thing working and how to install it and why is it so good. Now, here are some of the main benefits that attracted me to actually choosing Notice instead of Megajolt. Now, number one is, these are not in the order of importance, it's just as they come to mind. Now, number, number one is that you can actually install the Nodis module, the, you know, the, the, the actual controller, inside the engine bay of your car. It's actually splash proof and it can take the heat in the engine bay. Uh, when it comes to uh, Megajolt, you cannot do this and it needs to be routed into your cabin, actually into your passenger compartment of your vehicle. Now, uh, the MR2 is mid-engined and the engine is back, you know, in the back and this might be a little bit complicated when it comes getting all the wires in because the main wire going to the module itself is not that, of course, small and routing it in might be an issue. Now, I'm not sure about this because I have never done this, so if I'm saying something really stupid here, correct me. But anyway, I think putting it in the engine bay is a lot more simpler and I think it's nice, you know, to have the module in the engine bay. Number two is that the way to access the tuning software, you know, inside the, the, the module, uh, when it comes to the Megajolt, you need to have a tuning serial cable thing that you then plug into the unit and plug into your laptop and it has to be plugged in for you to, you know, tune your ignition, to change your ignition uh, maps. Now, when it comes to Notice, it actually has built-in uh, Bluetooth connectivity, so you don't need any sort of cable, you can just sit in there, you know, and do your tuning you know, in a lot more convenient way. That's number two. Now, number three is definitely um, the install. Now, installing the Mega Jolt is, let's say, relatively simple, but you actually, uh, you get, you know, the connections, you get the wires, but it's your job, you know, to get the whole thing connected, wired in, and working properly. Now, when you look at the wiring di you know, diagrams, it's not that complicated, but actually, you know, it's not that simple. Even, it's also not that simple because there's quite a bit of thing, you know, things you have to figure out and for someone who isn't you know, an electrical wizard it might be an issue and might take some time. Now in case of the notice you actually can opt to have the notice pre loomed which makes install a real breeze and what, you, and what you end up doing is getting the notice, putting it in your engine bay and putting, you know, connecting a few connections to the crank sensor and to the, you know, uh, to the ignition, ignition coils and 
that's pretty much it. Now, when it comes, uh, there's another thing when we're talking about ignition coils and stiff, uh, things like that, is that the notice actually uh, doesn't need a Ford EDIS module. Now, Megajolt cannot run without a Ford EDIS module, and it's your job to source a Ford EDIS module either from a junkyard or somewhere online, you know, and that makes the price difference between the Notice and the Megajolt that much more. When it comes to the Notice, it has the ignition drivers already built in, and this makes, again, the install simpler and the wiring, you know, nicer and more elegant and, as I said, simpler. So these are the main benefits that come to mind right now. And um, what I have to say is that I actually really, I'm really excited about this. It's going to make quite a few changes to my uh, bike carb conversion because now I have to think differently about the temperature, you know, sensors, coolant temperature sensors, and, uh, you know, other things that, that will need to be uh, resolved while I'm installing the uh, standalone ignition control. But, you know, all that aside, uh, sorry, the phone rang. Now, with all that aside, I'm still really excited about install because I think it's going to, you know, give me exactly what I want from this build and that's a really responsive, really entertaining, you know, car that's really fun to drive. I just said really like four times. Now, um, I guess that's it for today's video. These are the basic things. I'll be getting the, the Notice Pro in, in a, I think, a few weeks and once I get it, uh, we're going to go into all the details together and talk about, you know, how to get this thing running and what's in the box and, you know, everything else. I, uh, you know, all the little details are really important when installing this. So, I guess that's pretty much it for today when it comes to this video. Uh, as always, thanks a lot for watching. Thanks a lot for all of your support. Don't forget to share, like, you know, like, comment and subscribe. And see you soon on the D4A channel.